Hello, this is Dead Hamster, and today we're going to be doing part two of the tutorial video. This will be the quicker version without uh, as much detail put into the model. We already have the same model that we used for part one. We're just going to go through the process of compiling it and putting it together for a level. Uh, a bit quicker this time to uh, hopefully cut out some of the, uh, the length of the previous video. Let's go ahead and get right to things. So looking here at our uh, 3D model of the level, again we went with about 150 to 200 units across for the road. We just made a simple path around and back up. Uh, you know, there's our, uh, our level. So what we're going to do, we're going to use our uh, section tools here. I'm going to create two sections and the setup a button using my overcart script. Uh, if you're using the blender script you might be making these boxes manually. In that case we will be making two boxes, section one and two, a box called course master objects and this one is unnecessary it's something for the script itself not required. So we're gonna take our level we're gonna clone it so that we have a backup we're going to split it in two. The left half will be section one and the right half section two. We're going to put section one in section one. We're going to put section two in section two. We have to split our objects by material. Each object has to have one material unique to itself. So we're going to take section one and hit the detach or the split material button, or you can do this manually. And we'll end up with three objects, each one of them only one material. We'll do the same thing with section two. There we are. Now the surface geometry has to be named after the surface type that it uses along with a unique string. So for the grass, hide this. For the grass we're going to, and we can use this box to automatically name things, I'm going to put in the number 8 which is the material and I'm going to hit auto part. This will automatically rename them for me. You can also do this yourself. It automatically named them to 8 underscore part 0, 8 underscore part 1. The actual uh, template it has to use is the material ID number underscore and a unique string. So 8 part 1, 8 grass, 8 tuna fish are all valid. Um, these are the, the strings that you have to, to input there. Uh, so going back to this, the wall, our material type is 255 part 0 and 1 and the road is part or material one again part zero and one with that our surface geometry is finished we're going to hide that we're going to make another clone of our course geometry so that we always have a backup i'm going to do that with this button here this clone we're going to place into course master objects we're going to again split it by material. We have to split the geometry by material. If we wanted to, if we had a complex level, we would subdivide this into smaller objects so that we could turn objects on and off based on where we were in the level, what section we're in. This allows you to optimize the rendering and draw the level faster without lag. Uh, we don't need to worry about that because our model is extremely simple, so we're going to bypass that. I am going to give these a unique string just to be safe. I'm going to name them course auto part which will name them part 0 1 and 2 we now have our surface geometry and our render geometry finished and labeled we need to create the course paths the trees the piranha plants all of these things this is done with the paths and objects button it's going to create a couple boxes and a series of paths the paths can be any spline in Blender, this is a Bezier curve. The uh, Blender script will read these and export them. Uh, the same thing goes for the trees, the piranha plants, the Blender script handles those as well. For 3ds Max, uh, our script handles them on our side. We're going to place a few items. There's a box called Items Item Blocks and a child called Item, a single uh, cube there called Item. We're going to clone it. 
and any of the items that are underneath a child of objects item blocks all of those will be treated as items in game uh, the piranha plants all of these will be treated as piranha plants in game if you don't want any at all just delete it if they don't have any children it'll see zero and it won't create any in game same with the trees we're going to put a couple trees around Beautiful. And then the last thing would be the uh, the red coins. So this is a collectible that gives you a small speed boost. We're going to put a bunch of these around the level. Uh, you want to put them slightly off the track perhaps, hide them a little bit, not too far where it's difficult for a player to, to locate them. This is a race after all. It's kind of a tough balance. In Overcart, I place them way too far off the track, thinking of it as a time trial exercise, uh, but this is up to the creator. So find wherever you want your positions to be and uh, move everything around and place them. So with those positions, the last step is the course pads. I'm going to choose to make my own spline here. It's going to be a little bit quicker, actually. So going to uh, splines, line and just clicking out a few points now 3ds max has a wonderful tool that will let me go about this later it's called normalize spline and it will spread these points so that they're an equal distance apart ideally you want the splines to be exactly 20 units apart it's going to be pretty difficult to do but with this tool very easily uh, there's also a max number of points. You cannot have uh, more. Oh, that looks terrible. Oh, well, uh, you cannot have more than 800. If you have more than 800, there's going to be an error with the compiling program. Uh, so make sure you have less than 800 points, which I do here. I have 307. So we have our course pads. We have our coins, our item blocks. Uh, only other thing I feel I should mention materials. All your objects should have a diffuse map. The UV maps should not tile more than 16 times across a single triangle. Uh, that is the limit of the, the integer value that stores everything. All of the objects need to be positioned at 0, 0, 0. The rotation needs to be 0, 0, 0. The scale needs to be 100. If you need to move something, you should be moving the model data. You should not be moving the object. Tarmac, the compiling program, does not read object position or rotations, so it's going to completely ignore this. It only reads the model data itself, so you should only make edits to the model data, make sure everything is at 0, 0, 0. Uh, other than that, if you're familiar with 3D modeling, everything should be good from here. We are going to hit the export button. I've already saved this, but we're going to make a new one. Oh, it gave me an error. When I created my new uh, path here, where is it? I'm going to have to reopen the script because of that. That's okay. When I created my new path, I did not make it a child of course paths, which it has to be, the box called course paths. So we're just going to run the script again and hit the export button. And this time it's going to be fine and it's going to work. Yep, finished. All good. Now we're going to export the model. We're going to export an FBX file. Uh, that is the format that the importer uses. So that is done. We can now load up under Tools the course compiler. We hit the Load button. We're going to select the FBX file. This demo. It's going to give you a warning. Uh, it hopefully will only give you one warning. It says that it does not have a diffuse texture and cannot be used. There's always one material in the scene that doesn't have a diffuse texture. That is okay. If one of the materials that you're trying to use doesn't have a diffuse texture, that is not okay. That's going to be a problem. In this case, it's just the one. 
and we'll now select our pop file, which has the path and objects that we just exported a moment ago. With both of those selected, we can click in the black area and use WSAD and some other buttons to, uh, to navigate this field here. You can see our level. If I click the textured button, here it is textured. Off to the side are the parameters you would input for your preview images, your banner images, um, map the mini maps and the sky colors, uh, water levels, all these things. In the second tab, you can view your textures that the map is using. And you can see the unusable one is not one that we're trying to use, so we're okay in this scenario. Uh, our sections, which will show you the two sections of the level um, and the objects that can be seen in each one. And then finally, the, uh, the surfaces, which will show the surface types uh, as they're split up as well. We're not going to set anything further here. We're going to keep it in the mushroom cup and course one. And we'll uh, select... For the Mario Kart ROM, we have to select a patched version of the Mario Kart 64 ROM that has the hot swap or the overcart patch uh, already applied to it for custom levels. You can also use one of the levels that you've previously compiled, so you can continue to add new levels onto one of your ROMs. Uh, I'm going to now select the output directory where everything will be pushed out to in a moment or so. You can see that it's finished. These files here in the output directory have a ROM. If we go to play this, there we go. So progressing past the main menu into uh, map select, of course. We're going to hit the R button one time to enter a uh, custom set a and from here you can see the first level i've overwritten with the uh, the new level that we did not give a preview texture and we did not give a banner texture if we did it would look like one of these but because we did not provide one we get this lovely question mark when i go to load this level up however we can clearly see this was our level we have the trees and piranha plants we have our red coins, uh, everything is as it was in our 3D editor. Uh, so that's it, that's creating, and I'll do a quick lap just to show that everything does work. Uh, when we go around and complete our little circle here, we get our lap and proceed to lap two. Uh, so that would be creating a custom level for Mario Kart 64 uh, using the Tarmac 64 toolkit. If you have any questions or want help, the Discord server will be uh, linked below, as of course will be the Tarmac 64 editing kit as well. I want to thank everybody for their support. It's greatly appreciated as always, and uh, until next time, as always, you guys take care.